Good evening. The meeting of the Tomball ISD Board of Trustees for January is called to order at 530. Uh, for the record, a quorum of the board is present. All trustees are in attendance tonight. The meeting is being recorded in accordance with Government Code Section 551.128. The board discussed agenda items during the workshop meeting last night. Uh, and we will get going the, this evening with opening remarks by Mr. McLeod. The pledges will be led by uh, Mr. Lewandowski, and the mission statement will be recited by Mr. Unser. At this time, I'll ask you all to uh, please rise. For my opening remarks, I've composed a prayer, and you're welcome to join me. We bow our heads, dear God, because what else could we do? You've given us everything we need and then some. There are children and parents under the threat of war in other countries. There are children and parents traveling by foot hundreds of miles to our southern border. There are children denied education just because of their gender. There are children who don't ever learn because they're always working. And our children and our families have given, been given every opportunity because you've been so very kind to this country and to this state. We bow our heads and humbly acknowledge just how good we've got it. Please find us grateful for these opportunities, for all the resources, for our facilities, for all the experiences offered our kids, for the opportunity to serve and lead and help our students. We give you thanks. We trust you will take all our efforts to bring good into their lives, that they would know that it is more about what they achieve and more about who they become. We thank you, Father, for this night. We ask for your wisdom and insight and counsel as we make decisions for the good of the people of this community. We give you thanks in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledges to both the United States and the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On honor of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. And now the Tomball ISD mission statement. Tomball ISD educates students to become responsible, productive citizens by providing innovative, individually rigorous, and personally valuable educational experiences. Thank you. All right, please be seated. <coughs> At this time, I will turn the meeting over to Superintendent Dr. Martha Salazar Zamora to proceed with recognitions. Thank you so much, President McStravick, members of the board, all of you in the audience this evening. Um, we are very excited to begin with some very special recognitions. We have some uh, wonderful athletes here and very happy to see some family members here as well to celebrate our athletes. We will start with Tomball High School football team and I understand that uh, Dave Handel you will be um, addressing us today and we are happy to hear that uh, Kevin Flanagan I believe is, is expecting a grandchild this evening so he is not with us and we fully understand the importance of that responsibility yeah no yeah. come on up young man <laughs> don't be shy you guys just yeah face the board yeah face us this way this way <laughs> you got it hang tight hang tight <laughs> All right. They act like we've never talked about this. We are happy to see so many here. <laughs> All right, very good. There's some room on this side, guys. You don't have to be so far back. All righty, as our guys get situated, um, Dr. Zamora and your cabinet, Board of Trustees, thank you for, for having us here today. What an honor, but, but more importantly, thank you for all the support that you give us throughout the season. We definitely would not be here today without all the support uh, that you show and give us. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, standing before you today is the Tomball High School 2023 football team, a team that just completed the most successful three-year run in Tomball football history in over 38 years. Wow. A team that has played in 11 playoff games in the last three years a team that has won eight playoff games 
in the last three years. In 2023, they were regional semifinalists for the third year in a row. More importantly than their on-field success is their success that they've had in the classroom. This year, we've had 54 kids that were named academic all-district team, and that's out of 63 kids on the roster, which, which is pretty impressive. We had 17 kids named to the academic all-state team. This group is the defending Texas High School Coaches Association Academic Excellence 6A state champs. This team defines the true meaning of student athlete, and at the end of the day, that's what high school athletics is all about, student athletes. I present to you the 2023 Tomball High School football team, a group of young men that will never know how important they are to me, the impact that they've made on my life, and the impact that they've made on this community. While we'll never share a field, a football field on Friday nights, the memories and the relationships will last forever. And to me, that's what high school sports is all about. So ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 Tomball football team. like you brought the whole team tonight. <laughs> Full house. How fun. Thank you again, gentlemen. It was a pleasure to see you out on that field. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye. All right, come on up. Very good. And so just a, a line across. Yeah, you're good. So just a feel form a line across. Very nice. Thank you. And for Tomball Memorial this evening, Tomball Memorial um, High School football team, we have, I know somewhere behind these young men, <laughs> is Sam Parker. Kind of hard to lose you, but these gentlemen are, are nice and tall. <laughs> They're <too>. still coming. <laughs> I love how many of our student athletes made it out tonight from both high schools. That says a lot about you as a team. Mr. Parker. Yeah. I think they're still coming in, so I just want to oh, make okay. sure. Yeah. Is that <laughs> I it? can't see back there. They're so tall. Uh, Dr. Zamora, members of the cabinet, uh, thank you all so much for having us. And uh, so many thank yous uh, for everybody that's involved in what a season looks like. Um, and, and to brag on the 2023 football team that's in front of you, uh, the 2023 football team was 10-2. and two. Um, and, and a lot of times records are stated, and I just want to kind of put that into emphasis a little bit. Out of 249 6A programs, 
Um, only 35 had 10 wins or more. So that you're looking at the top 14% in the entire state of Texas in front of you right now. Uh, finished ranked 35 in the state of Texas by district champions, area finalists. Um, very specifically, 18 um, were first team all district players, seven second team all district players, six honorable mention, 22 academic all district players, 14 uh, Texas High School Coach Association academic all state uh, with a 98 passing rate and a 70% AB honor roll. Um, Obviously, what makes this group special uh, started uh, last January. And a lot of these guys will tell you uh, when these guys, a lot of these seniors were sophomores, they had to play. And they had to be they put through the fire and did an absolutely amazing job and were absolutely amazing this year. Uh, we, we found our program on trust. Uh, it's an acronym that we use for who we are. Um, but it's absolutely unbelievable what these men accomplished and what they were able to do this year. Um, this is also, we're standing here because of obviously you, but we're also standing here because of the parents and the community that we have uh, in Tomahawk Memorial. We really honestly feel that Tomahawk Memorial is the best community, the best parents in the entire nation. And I, I say that to my community a lot, um, and I truly feel that it's second to none. Uh, we also have, uh, joining us tonight, a bunch of our staff members um, that have, are a big reason for why we're here as well. Uh, I am forever grateful for this team, uh, and I think back to the, the last playoff game, um, and Dr. Gutierrez, Dr. Zamora sent me a text, and I can't tell you how much that meant to me personally, uh, but standing in front of these guys for the last time and taking a knee with them for the last time, uh, they will never know what it meant to me, what they've accomplished, uh, and what we've done together as a team. Uh, I'm forever grateful, and again, your 2023 championship football team from Tombaugh Memorial. Okay, 
Thank you, young men, for coming out tonight. We also enjoyed seeing you out on the field. You're having fun together. <laughs> we are. That's great. Right? I love it. I love it. Thank you, families, for coming out to um, experience it. Thank you so much, Coach. Appreciate you. Thank you to our parents and other family members. That's exciting. <laughs> all right. Well, that certainly was a lot of student athletes. I'm glad they all made it out tonight. That concludes our recognitions for this evening. At this time, I will turn the meeting back over to our President McStravick for public comment on agenda items. Mr. All McStravick. Right. Great. Thank you. i tell you what, what we're going to do is we've got uh, some non-agenda um, public comment as well. So I'm going to move that up uh, to the front. We have two that are uh, on the non-agenda public comment. Uh, Landon, you are going to be first, and then Mark Segaloff, you will be second. But as you're coming up, Landon, hold on while I read the script for non-agenda items. The board encourages comments about the district from members of the public. However, speakers are required to, to conduct themselves with proper respect and decorum in addressing the Board of Trustees and in all conduct during the board meeting. Individuals who do not conduct themselves in an orderly and appropriate manner will receive a verbal warning and may be asked to leave the meeting. If the, um, you will have uh, no longer than three minutes, the timer will be set. Uh, for any member of the public who is accompanied by a translator, your time will be doubled as required by law. We will utilize an electronic timer visible on the right side of the speaker's podium. The first minute will be displayed in green. An audible tone will sound when the speaker has one minute remaining and the display will change to yellow. Another tone will sound with 10 seconds remaining and the display will change to red. At the end of the three minutes, an audible tone will sound to end the session. Remember, the board may not discuss or act upon any issue that was not posted on the agenda. In addition, the board has adopted policies to provide prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns for employees, students, or their parents, and the general public. Copies of our district policies and procedures on public comment and filing complaints are available on the district website. Thank you for your concern regarding our school district, and we will hear from you now. Landon, you have three minutes, my friend. Well, it's going to be really quick now because that means my song and dance is inappropriate for you, John. So. I'll throw that off of here. All right. uh, sorry I didn't get to you guys early enough. It's been that kind of holidays for everybody, but this is Board Appreciation for Trustees Month. And Commissioner Ramsey wanted to make sure that we got out and we let each one of them know how much we know their job means to us and also to all the people in the public and how tough it is. So we'd like to at least get out on the January before that school gets going again and let y'all know how much the commissioner and us appreciate you guys here at the board. So I'm gonna read one off and then I will hand them out to you guys. The Honorable Harris County Precinct 3 Commissioner Tom S. Ramsey, PE, hereby recognizes all the Tomball Trustee Board for your service to Tomball ISD January 9th, 2023, being the date that we're honoring you as Precinct 3 Commissioner of Harris County, Texas, and on behalf of the constituents of Harris County, it is my honor to recognize and congratulate all the Tomball Board for your faithful service on the Tomball ISD Board of Trustees. Your dedication and steward educational experience for students in our community are truly making the district a great place to live and learn. Thank you for your invaluable contributions to the board as you serve the faculty, students, and families. We wish you continued success in Harris County Precinct 3. Tom S. Ramsey. Thank you all. Thank you, Landon. As Landon uh, walks away, I will also say last night 
Uh, we had a donation by the uh, Tomball Education Foundation for $125,000. Landon is also a board member on the foundation. So thank you, Landon, for your participation there. Okay, Mark, you are up, my friend. And as soon as you start talking, I'll start a uh, three-minute clock. Uh, good evening. Hope all of you had a great vacation, great New Year, great holiday. Uh, there was actually the non-agenda item. I got an email today from a district employee that gave some more flavor to it. I responded with an email, so hopefully get some more answers with that. So I'm going to hold off my comment on my non-agenda item, barring the uh, further information from the district employee. So I thank you for that. All right. Thank you, sir. And so now we will move into uh, comments on agenda items. And again, I do have a little <laughs> script to read before we get started, but I will let you know. Um, Julie Pascheng, Pascheng, sorry, okay, you will be the first speaker, okay? Mark, you'll be behind her, and then uh, David, you'll be behind Mark. Okay, let me get reading on this. The board encourages comments about the district from members of the public. However, speakers are required to conduct themselves with proper respect and decorum in addressing the board of trustees and in all conduct during the meeting. Individuals who do not conduct themselves in an orderly and appropriate manner will receive a verbal warning and may be asked to leave the meeting. The board asks that each participant uh, comment pertain to an agenda item identified on the public comment form and be no longer than three minutes. Speakers who are addressing uh, more than one agenda item may have one additional minute. We don't have that in this case. Uh, for any member of the public who is accompanied by a translator, your time will be doubled as required by law. We will utilize an electronic timer visible on the right side of the speaker podium. The first minute will be displayed in green. An audible tone will sound when the speaker has one minute remaining and the display will change to yellow. Another tone will sound when 10 seconds remain and the display will change to red. At the end of three minutes, an audible tone will sound to end the session. Remember, the board may not discuss or act upon any issue that are not posted on the agenda. In addition, the board has adopted policies and, and, uh, to provide prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns for employees, students or their parents, and the general public. Copies of the district policy and procedures on public comment and filing complaints are available on the district's website. Thank you for your concern regarding our school district, and we will hear from you now. Julie? As soon as you start talking, I'll, I'll start the three-minute timer, okay? Um, I don't need three minutes, um, but I wanted to take a moment because so many times all the parents show up when we want to tell you how we think you could do your job better, right? But nobody ever shows up when we want to say thank you and say something positive. So that's what I'm here to do. Um, I wanted to thank everybody here, especially Dr. Zamora, for listening to the community and for reconsidering the location of Intermediate School Number 5. We are so thankful that you all are considering a different option, and I genu genuinely believe that if we can keep that school in Creekside, you are changing the lives of our children like in such an impactful way. So I wanted to say that. Um, and then I also want to say if there's anything the community can do to help along the way, I know it's not going to be easy to build a school there while there's already a school there. Please let us know. We're a united community. We can come together. And everybody is very motivated to do whatever we can to help throughout the process. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And I, I bet we take you up on that, Julie. <laughs> All right, Mark, you've got three minutes. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is about uh, considered agenda item D. I just want to thank the administration and the staff and the board and Dr. Z for uh, finding a hopeful solution to the Creekside issue with the uh, uh, fifth and sixth grade campus. We really appreciate the work that you uh, have put into it. I know it's not been easy with everything else going on. So I just want to say thank you as well for the uh, continued work on that uh, from everyone involved. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. All right, David, you are up next. I'm also not going to need three minutes. Okay. 
First, I uh, just want to hope everybody had a wonderful holiday, great time with your family and friends, and Happy New Year to everyone. Um, secondly, like Julie and Mark have said, you've seen a lot from us over the last several months, uh, but I want to take the time to come and also thank you. Um, you certainly made a big impact on us as families and the community and our children, and for uh, your effort to help find a solution for intermediate number five, we're truly grateful. I really do think that Tomball ISD is destination excellence, and I think what you as leaders have shown as how to run a school district has really been incredible. Our teachers are fantastic, our school administration is fantastic, and you as leaders have helped to show the impact that a community can have when they work collectively with the school board to find a solution that doesn't just benefit one community, but the district as a whole. So I want to thank you for that and ask you to continue to keep doing that. Um, and then lastly, I just want to congratulate you, Dr. Z. You've see, received numerous awards and recognitions over the last, well, really for last year, but in the last couple of months. Uh, it's certainly well earned, and we thank you for what you do. And uh, thank you for the entire board for helping to work with us to find solutions. So I wanted to offer my appreciation. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate y'all's comments. Okay, that concludes the public comment portion of the agenda. So at this point, we will now move into the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. A uh, motion is made by Mr. Lewandowski and seconded by Mr. Unser. It is any discussion? I, I just, John, I want to underscore the comments that um, uh, others have made about uh, the Tomball Education Foundation. Uh, first, what an impressive size check that was and is, and uh, the impact that that will have uh, and the excitement mm -hmm. that has been and will be generated by that activity. Um, I look forward to seeing the results of all those grants that are issued, but I I can't wait to see the Facebook posts and the and social of all the excitement of presenting all those checks. So, um, uh, congratulations to the Tomball Education Foundation and, and thank uh, a, a set of great leaders there as well. So, yeah, it's very very exciting. Um, I mentioned last night. I think it's worthy of mentioning again that very very few districts um, throughout the state, if not nation, have ed foundations that have zero paid staff members, and so every dollar that's collected is able to go back into. Our, to, our, to benefit our students and our staff. And so we're very, very appreciative of that. And to be able to give a check of $125,430 is incredible. So we know that will benefit. I know they gave the numbers last night of how many students' lives that will touch. Um, incredibly proud of the Ed Foundation that we started uh, my first year as superintendent here back in 2017. Thankful for this board for supporting the idea of having an education foundation. It only continues to get better and better. Hmm. The best is yet to come. Yeah. Um, and since you opened the door, Michael, I do yeah. have to say one other thing. You know, this is not the only thing the Ed Foundation does. No, no. One of the one of the big other things that they sponsor is Stuff the Bus. Mm -hmm. And while Stuff the Bus is, um, I think most people know that as donations coming in from schools uh, that go to uh, other schools and other children, maybe in the in the same campus, maybe not. But in addition to that, though, there's also uh, some dollars that are that are donated and those dollars go towards a lot of other things that include mattresses and clothing um so it's it's very impressive what the uh working with the school district uh with mr shield and, and others it's uh, amazing what the what the uh, education foundation has done other than right. the grants right awesome. okay so with that any other discussion on the uh, consent agenda if not all those in favor raise your hand a motion carries unanimously. We'll now move into the considered agenda. Item A, designate Mark White, Assistant Superintendent of Accountability, as alternate approver, approver for TEA web applications within the TEAL system. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made by uh, Mr. Pratt, Dr. Pratt, and um, it's seconded by Mr. McLeod. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Lewandowski. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Item B, approve an addendum to the Clear Hope contract extending service to June 30, 2024, 
and increasing the contract amount by $113,885 for a total of $178,885 using the Tomball Regional Health Foundation grant. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion's made by um, Mr. Shield, seconded by Mr. Um, McLeod. Okay, any, uh, any discussion? Yeah, just um, last night, Dr. Z, you talked about this item a little bit. Could you just expand on that again tonight, just so we can hear again? Yes, the, um, the district is committed to continuing our opportunities and offerings for emotional support for mental health. Um, Dr. Mr. Shields, led by Dr. Webb and the team, all of our counselors, and, and really uh, uh, district staff have done an immense, uh, an incredible job in ensuring that we continue to provide for mental health. And this, we are very grateful to the Tomball Regional Health Foundation for this grant. Um, I know it takes effort to apply for a grant, but to, re to be able to receive this, to continue to provide additional opportunities for students is, is um, incredibly helpful. So we are very grateful. Very good. Thank you. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All those in it, favor? It, oh, oh, go oh, ahead, Lee. It's just a, uh, I, f I don't know why, but it's maybe the news has me thinking a lot about kids in other places. And the opportunities and resources that our kids have access to, they're unrivaled. They, they really are. And, and this emotional support, phone counseling, counseling centers. Emotional backpacks. It, emotional backpack. I was just thinking of the football players that were here and all that goes into making a football team happen. That's all extra, right? That's beyond just getting an education. That's sports are an extra, and that our kids get to do that so consistently, and it's just a sign of how good that we've got it, and the resources that come into this community. Did y'all see in the Community Impact News that the average income in Tomball had gone up like twenty thousand dollars? All the data. Did y'all see that? Anybody see that in the news? Community Impact yeah, News. Just the, the <laughs> affluence, the the increase, the resources. There's just all kinds of incredible good things for our kids. And so this is just one of the small signs of, or a symptom of all of the, the good that's happening. And so I'm, I'm grateful to support something like this, you bet. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously, it uh, passes. We'll now move to item C. Approve the total budget for the completion of the TISD Agricultural Center located at the Tomball Innovation Center by be increased by $1 million to a total budget of $9 million using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Shield, seconded by Mr. McLeod. Any discussion? Hey, remind us, Dr. Z, what remains? I think you may have mentioned it. What remains at the TAC? Um, what Is remains to be done? Remains? Yeah. Um, yes, we'll continue with CTE opportunities. This is no, no, part of no, no, no. the, 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 the construction, the finishing. Touches. Oh, we may. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, we did a walkthrough recently this past week, um, and there are some I would call Dr. Z finishing touches. A couple of uh, things that I wanted to add: some uh, a little bit of color here and there, some uh, a little more aesthetics, I would say, um, some work on the the bathrooms. But the facility itself is ready. Uh, to welcome there they are the sound system is fabulous the 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 heating was working that day it was cool outside so for anyone that's been to a show in the past you know if it was cold outside it was colder inside mm -hmm. <laughs> the aluminum building and so we are excited about that I know there was a lot of discussion about that and it came at additional dollars um, but I do think that our um, our families our students our community will very much appreciate that and so very little remains. It's the, the punch list, of Got course, it. is there. And walked around the facility and looked at some outlets that needed to be secured and some, there is still tile to be placed in the bathrooms. We're working on that right now. And um, I would just call it some finishing touches yeah. that I think would make it the facility that we will all be extremely proud of. Got Today it. you did receive um, an invite to a ribbon cutting. Uh, it is very short notice but we would like okay. to allow you at least the opportunity to see it before it becomes okay. the the first event the big event january big 24. Event. yes everyone in the community is invited to come out and support our students and um hopefully support them financially as well cheer them on it's the uh, ffa project show yeah. and if you have not been to the ffa project show you need to come much fun january 24 25th 26 27th a correct? lot of work goes into right? this 
Am um, I a day ahead? No, you're good. Uh, yes, yeah, when, right? it's yeah, Wednesday, right. Thursday, Friday. Ag Mechanics on Saturday. Wednesday, the Saturday. Wednesday the Saturday 24th. Is that right? Yeah, 2 o'clock. The sale. Mechan the sale, the sale is on Saturday, Saturday the 27th? At 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. If you haven't been, you really ought to come out to this event. It is a fantastic is. showing of what our kids are capable of. It's a great it's community event as well. Alumni of that program Start right here. Oh, yes. John's an alumni. Starts with the special needs right. rodeo. How many people on the board have participated, and I mean overall, in raising animals or participating in the show, not just here in Tomball, but overall? Dr. Schindelwolf? Okay, it is an experience, and I ask that because having raised pigs in the past and helping my children with rabbits and goats down in Keensville, um, it, it is, it, there's a lot to be learned through that, and I do think it's exciting oh, that yeah. our students have that opportunity to continue um, raising an animal and then perhaps profiting from that in the end. So It's an amazing program, and I mean, I think the, the, the district supports it by, by a show of the, the project facilities that we have at each of the high school campuses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, amazing show. So, okay. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to item D. Approve the recommendation to select Huckabee as the architect to design <coughs> the fifth grade addition at Creekside Park Junior High. Authorize the superintendent to negotiate and sign a contract agreement with Huckabee for these services using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Lewandowski, seconded by Mr. Unser. Uh, is there any discussion? I want to just underscore my comments from last night. Um, I appreciate all of the additional effort that you and your team made in, and I'm just going to say in the year 2023, to try and figure out a means um, to solve for tenable land. And I think the solution uh, of a fifth grade addition uh, is the right solution. Um, I particularly like it because it gets um, a consistent format of our, of our you know, K through four, five and six, seven, eight, and, and comprehensive high schools on the same page in the district. I particularly like it because it frees up dollars uh, where we can go address other issues um, that uh, may or may not be addressed with bond 2021 or are incremental to go solve something that's occurred or arisen as a result of of our needs and so uh, i uh, want to underscore my comments and thank you um it's uh, 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 a great testimony to listening and ultimately um, dr z and her team listen yeah so thank you now, thank you. Thank you to the whole board, certainly the team, the community for working with us through a, a difficult process because, you know, two of us are residents in Creekside and we know land is, is challenging. That was our biggest challenge and um, had one idea and when that couldn't work, continue to rework it. And so um, I'm very grateful that we were able to do something. Thank you for the parents who came out and spoke tonight and many others who have voiced their their, their pleasure and their, their happiness because that's that's really what we want. That's what these individuals on the board want. That's what we want as administration. So um, looking forward to the facility and the future um, and this opportunity for our, our kiddos in Creekside. I wanna add though, I wanna follow up on the comment that um, Julie made I don't normally address those that, that you know come and speak, but um, all of the concerns that were voiced um, that led to the first recommendation that it wasn't right, um, you know, to build a particular campus or you know a separate standalone facility at that site because of the traffic, because of the congestion, because of um, the concern about uh, what it would do to the existing junior high um, experience. Um, we're going to ask for patience. Yes. So um, all of the emails that we expect will come within the first three to five days of, of, of the school year because of the traffic, because of the congestion. Um, we hope that this memory won't be lost of, of what this experience was like. And we ask for patience that ultimately uh, people understand why that experience is going to occur on the use of that facility, that site. Um, it's because we've made a decision to be more dense in how we're going to educate our, our children because we are uh, 
um, utilizing that, that land. Yeah. So We will do everything we can to minimize that. There will be some challenges, and, you know, first week of school, that's anywhere um, at any time. We know that. That's but just... but in general, we definitely will do everything we can to mitigate that um, and still very, very happy that we've been able to do something that was so important to the community. Um, and I feel like the community will give us grace as we work <coughs> through that um, when we do have additional students there. Good point. I'll just add on, Dr. C. I concur with everything Dr. Pratt has said. Um, really happy to see this item on the agenda for today. Um, happy to support this, and assuming that it passes, uh, very happy to be moving forward. I know it's not the easiest path to get here. It might not be the easiest path going forward, but I believe it's the right path going forward, and I'm very happy to support that. Uh, half the second, you know, it's not not the easiest path forward. There will be challenges to overcome, so we'll see how that goes over the, over the period. Very excited to see, should this pass, how Huckabee can come up with innovative designs. I have confidence in that group. Uh, they've shown what they can do at the high school, so this will be a neat experience. Uh, but very happy to see fifth and sixth grade aligning with the rest of the district. There are benefits there, as we know, and, and Dr. Webb has outlined that many times in the past. It's only good things for the community. Uh, happy to see the support and everybody come together. It's a good time in Tom Ball. Let's move forward. Very good. Thank you. All right. Anything else? My, my only comment, <coughs> kind of jumping on exactly what everybody else has shared, and, and I guess a follow to last night's comments, were that um, we took the time. You took the time. Your team took the time. A lot of time. Yes. And uh, needed to be taken. And this process, like the, the boundary that we're going to look at tonight, <coughs> item H, a lot there's enormous amounts of time that goes into trying to get it right and I I concur that I think you got it right I really do dr. Z and so I just want to thank all of the efforts of the team because I know there was a lot of energy and time committed to, to listening readdressing I was yesterday thinking back on all the meetings mm -hmm. right started with the town hall that, that didn't go real well, right? And then, <laughs> no, it then did not. other meetings that could have gone better, right? But, but every time it got a little clearer. I really believe it just took that long. Yeah. What, what is that uh, Marine saying, slow is smooth and smooth is fast? There you go. Uh, there, there's some real truth to that. Sure. There you go. Um, so I'm just really right. There are lessons learned in everything. You and bet. So um, when, I, when I thank the team, I, I mean the inclusive team, members in the audience, members up here of Cabinet, um, everybody that was a part of the think tank yeah. to try to get this right, because right. that was always our goal. So and, and I guess I, I failed to mention, and again, Dr. Pratt did, um, the efficiency that moving forward with this project provides in costs being available for other aspects of the district I think is a, is a big deal that, that we can't underplay. There are other needs that can be addressed in this way, uh, so it, it checks, the box, checks the boxes for lots of different things. So anything worth doing is worth doing right, and I think we did it. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All right. All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item E. Approve the recommendation to select Gamma Construction Company from RFP number 947-23 to construct Tomball West High School with a construction budget of $168,840,000 with an overall project budget of $241,200,000 using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made by Ms. Salem, seconded by Mr. Hey. McLeod. All right, is there any discussion? The, the, the size of these numbers is causing me, you know, room for pause, but it's not a pause of <laughs> from the lack of support. It's just, wow, we're building a, a, uh, a complex out there and uh, the, the, the cost of standing up a 3,000 student capacity facility um, is, is eye-popping. And what you really need to understand, the pause should be how lucky yeah. we yeah. are as a district because there is nobody in the surrounding area that was able to do what we've done, which although this is an extremely high number, it's incredibly low for what the 
the increase is in the market mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of us have slept really well worrying about what this outcome would be and what that would mean. Because remember, we went out for the bond prior to the the ridiculous increase is what I will call it. And and that was that gave us all much concern. Um, so until this came to be, now we feel like, okay, this is certainly manageable, not minimizing it. We know it's a great deal of money, but it could have been exponentially much, much more, mm -hmm. and we very much worried that it yeah. would be. Um, I think it will be a third comprehensive high school that will stand the test of time, that will make us incredibly proud. We have the pride of Texas that today still looks as beautiful, I think, as, as when it was built. It has been added on to Tombow Memorial, who came in second and strong and has continued to do that. And the West High School, Tomball West High School, the home of the Tigers, will um, continue on the excellence, the trajectory of excellence in our district. So this is a remarkable number. I mean, truly. I know Mr. Ross and the team over there is going, yes, we are definitely living life right because there is nobody. To, I've had calls. Like, how on earth did that happen? Um, so the, we needed a break. The, the, the <laughs> conversation that I want to continue to have in front of us as we move down this path is the utilization in the Correct. third, fourth, fifth year of that of that facility. Definitely. I know that's a longer brain, but I'm not comfortable at a lower than seventy percent utilization rate. And until we start, you know, occupying that building, and you know, in, in those years, uh, I want us to keep. Um, uh, Looking at that. Finding ways sure. to utilize the space until the population ultimately uh, gets us to, what, 80, 90 percent where we're comfortable. Yeah, very good. Thank you. All right, any other comment? Uh, I guess I would just like to say thank you for working this through the uh, competitive bid process here. Um, <clears throat> it's yeah. not by accident how we land on this vendor with this price point. Uh, you know, Robert Elian is, is a big part of that as well, and Jim and his team. It's not made in a vacuum. We don't just pick a name out of a hat. There's a competitive bid process, sealed bid process to get here, a very uh, robust process. Uh, so I thank you for continuing with that longstanding uh, tradition, having control on it. I can see it here in front of me. So I'm making that informed decision to support this going forward. Thanks. Very good. For thank big you. numbers, as Dr. Pratt has pointed out. Definitely. It's not a small purchase. Anything else? Yeah, I'll just reiterate, too. I, I actually have, have also uh, heard others say we just set the market reset the market mm -hmm. so. definitely that's a good way of putting it um i think it's going to help other districts moving forward yeah. um, because nobody could believe it but a lot of work goes into that so jim sure. team land thank you all very much appreciate all right all those in favor raise your hand <coughs> motion carries unanimously moving on to item f Approve portable building infrastructure construction to provide de desk covers and sidewalks for the portable building for the portables being installed at Tomball Intermediate School with Point Alliance Solution for $259,593.65 using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion's made by Mr. Unser, seconded by Mr. Scheel. Is there any discussion? I, I, I would just say, uh, you know, T buildings, portables are nobody's favorite thing to talk about or discuss or to spend money on, but it's it's necessary. And you know, we have an item coming up later that will help with this in the future. And as Western Intermediate comes online, but uh, today, Tomball Intermediate is is full, yeah. and they need help. Need a little help. What, what I do like is that uh, how I've seen Tomball do this in the past with T buildings compared to some of our neighbors, we do it the right way. So I appreciate that it's done safely with coverings and utilities are put in the right place. They're not out in the open. It, it looks good and it's functional and it serves our purpose. So I like when we do something, we do it the right way. Don't like to do it, but when you have to, do it the right way. And it's done with safety in mind. Exactly. Yeah. Any other comments? All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to G. Approve the installation and a 12-month rental agreement for four T buildings for Tombow Intermediate School. The installation, removal, and rental agreements to be provided by satellite shelters for a total cost of 
$202,732 using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. McLeod, seconded by Mr. Unser. Is there any discussion? Nope. All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item H. Approve new Tomball ISD elementary school attendance boundaries effective for the 2024-2025 school year and endorse new attendance boundaries for intermediate schools, junior high schools, and high schools as recommended by administration through the district zone reset process. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion is made by Ms. Salem and is seconded by Mr. Sheel. All right. Is there any discussion? I'd just like to say thank you to the team because they did an outstanding job with the presentation and all their facts and tons and tons of time and you can really see how everyone came together to make it all gel. Very proud of the team. It was an incredible amount of, of, of work. Um, again, team here, team seated as well. Um, special thanks to Dr. Gutierrez as well with a lot of support from Dr. Schindelwolf and, of course, Dr. Webb. Um, it was Team Tomball at its best, trying to provide, again, something that is not always pleasant, but it was done with a lot of community collaboration and input in every way that we could. Um, this isn't a process that will ever please everybody, but it was our goal to please as many as we could, still accomplishing what we needed to accomplish. So I am a very proud superintendent. Yeah, I, I would just add to that. Uh, thank you. Martha and your team for, for going through this process. This is one of the ones where I feel very proud to be a part of Tomball. Uh, I don't know that this happens, this type of process happens in other districts around us. Sometimes I think uh, families might just get an email that says, hey, tomorrow you're going to this school in, instead. Right. We're here, uh, a lot of transparency. Uh, there are maps and videos and uh, documentation available on the website, everything that that um, uh, committee used to make their recommendation, which is here in front of us today, is available for everybody to see. Uh, appreciate Dr. Gutierrez and Dr. Schindewolf running through all the statistics yesterday about how many views there were, uh, how many unique views there were, not just somebody watching it five times, but unique IP addresses or MAC addresses, whatever it is of people that have looked at it. A lot of folks saw this material, and if they haven't, my understanding is it'll still be there in the future for folks to go look at, which, which they should. The community should be informed and understand what's going on in the community. And this, this is a huge step in that direction. So I really appreciate that. And I think, uh, Lee, last night you, you tallied it up. Something around 1,823 students <coughs> will be moved with this. And, and for me, I, I said it last night, I'll say it again, it's, it's making sure that it's the right 1,823 students that find their new home, their new permanent school that they'll be at where they can start their journey or continue on with their education. It's going to be an excellent education no matter what, what building it's in. That's what we do here at every building. It's all day, every day, bell to bell. That's what we do. It's what you do and your team, not me. Uh, and I appreciate that. So it's, it's been a long, long process, but I think it was worth it again to go through it, yeah. right? I Tomball think. cares. And this, this shows in my opinion. So I, I really appreciate that. Dr. Gutierrez, Dr. Schindelwolf, everybody that was on that committee, all the principals that were there and all the community members that were a part of that and provided input. It's, it's time in people's lives that went into it to get to the right choices, the right decisions, and I think we have it here. I appreciate it. Yeah, same thing. I'm going to go again, appreciate all the work was done on here. Make us look good. That's a lot of work, a lot of emails. Just same thing. I like to hopefully y'all work on the West High School, get it filled up, gently filling it up with um, kids so we can help. We're going to be back at Memorial being overcrowded again in four years, whatever five years, whatever it is. So hopefully we can figure all that out and, you know, you, you utilize that building to the, the best. Uh, it's going to be, from what, we can see, what I've seen, it's going to be pretty nice. So um, if you're a parent, you know, that's a really nice school. So don't discount going a little bit further west. So um, hopefully we figure that out. And, you know, I know Jim's and Zach here is going to be saying, hey, we got to put some more kids in there. So um, hopefully we can do it gently and, you uh, not have a big blowout again. So <laughs> appreciate you. I'll I'll say um, this visits one of the concerns that uh, Dr. Pratt alluded to in the underutilization, right, 
Um, my concern was that we were just moving kids, I made this comment last night, just to move kids, just to fill the school. And, um, and I saw in all the process that we did everything we could not to do that. We weren't just moving kids from uncrowded campuses just to fill a campus. And there's so many good things in this process. I'm so grateful for the way this was managed uh, from top to bottom, from beginning to end. All the email correspondence, the feedback that you took from the community, consistently asking, okay, what else, what else, what else? I really, really appreciate the process. I think maybe Justin last night said, can you somehow copyright this or publish a book or do something with it? Can you teach people about how to do this or manage it going forward? It's just an excellent exercise, and it shows much about our community's confidence in the district and the district's confidence in the community that, that their voices count. And so it just means, means a great deal, it means a great deal. And, and the, the underutilization of the campus, that concern, I figure that will work itself out somehow, whether it's an intra-district enrollment opportunity, as was mentioned as an idea last night, um, or, or something else, an academy, or you said another P-TECH, or who knows what. Uh, I'm excited to see what comes. So thank you for all your efforts. Really thank appreciate you. it. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, join in in the conversation. Um, I really appreciated um, the amount of time, energy, and effort that went into the presentation. Uh, it was, um, as you and I talked um, uh, before the meeting, mm -hmm. uh, it, it had all of the right elements that I was looking for. <clears throat> I'm pleased that the board uh, had a policy, uh, provided the guiding tenants or the guideposts, because I feel like that um, took a lot of the, 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 the kickoff, the, the startup part of it um, you know, off the table. Mm -hmm. The team didn't need to focus on, hey, what are our organizing you know, principles and, and guiding um, uh, tenants? Um, I, I, I appreciated the dialogue we had about demographics. Um, as I <clears throat> have highlighted over the course of the last year, I've been a skeptic. Um, at this point, I'm taking it off of the table. I don't have the concerns that I had a year ago. Um, uh, I recognize now that the input that uh, we might have been lacking has now been integrated into the, the study. Um, I appreciate the dialogue about the human judgment part in addition to, you know, Zonda. Um, you know, John has always highlighted that you know, the tolerance is, you know, within one to five percent, mm -hmm. depending on if it's the district level or the campus level. So uh, I, I want to take that off of the table and, and I will communicate that widely uh, because I don't think that we have a demographics concern when it comes to uh, to the, the five year plan that, that was presented here. So I think that's an important thing for me to offer. Um, uh, the other thing that I think is important in terms of uh, the proof points about does the Tumble ISD listen. There were 2,132 survey responses. And Dr. Gutierrez and Karen Graves and the, the folks in that wing of the building uh, read every one of them. Um, I was impressed by that. I didn't have an appreciation for that. I, I, I questioned um, you know, Dr. G's uh, use of his free time. Uh, but uh, man, I am so appreciative of, of the effort that was taken to theme and comprehend uh, the 2,102 thirds. I, I have no question um, that when I'm at the grocery store, that, um, right, that Tumble ISD didn't listen. I'll defend that because I, 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 the, the data, the proof points are there. So I appreciated that. Um, I think the communication plan, the, 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 the transparency that you and team offered uh, has also been valuable. I've received very few emails after the modified plan four was published. Um, and that to me is a great indicator that, you know what, while not perfect, this is pretty right. And so um, for me, uh, what's important going forward after this vote um, is communications mm -hmm. for those that may not be paying attention. Uh, communications to some of the neighborhoods like Hayden Lakes, Wildwood, Oak Crest, Wildwood at Oak Crest, um, Copper Bend, Indian Trails, Timuron. I wanna make sure that, you know, we're getting the word out uh, that this is the plan. And I'll, and I'll wrap with um, the comment that John made last night that um, what we're effectively doing with this vote 
um, is codifying the elementary um, boundaries, uh, but we're going to maintain uh, the flexibility, uh, call an audible, if you will, in terms of the intermediate, junior, higher, high school zones, based upon things that may happen between now and when West or intermediate opens in 2025, when the addition at Creekside is done in 2026, and then when Tomball West ultimately opens in 2026. So I really like that. Um, it gives us the flexibility, uh, but uh, to address things that we know will happen be based on our experiences. And I'll, and I'll end with this. The last time this was done was in 2009, 2010. Um, I was a um, you know, very eager parent to hear how this would affect my children. Um, and I will say, this process was done so much more effectively than that process that existed 14 years ago. And so, um, as a recipient tw two times now, um, this one uh, lands right, and I, I agree with the comments made. Uh, it's worth it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> one, one final minor point. Um, last night was about two hours. How long did y'all speak yesterday? It was about two uh, hours. A little over. Yeah. <laughs> Felt like six. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little longer, but, but it was uh, a little over there, two. There was a lot of detail there. So if somebody's watching this video in uh, a month, a year, two years from now, wondering how we got here, go to the video from last night, right. January 8th, yeah, you on YouTube, YouTube, and watch that. And that has all of the detail, all of the maps, all the questions that were asked, all that sort of stuff. It's all documented there, in addition to the website where that will live on. Uh, with the maps, et cetera, et cetera, that, that went into this. So it's it's all there for you to see on how we reached this point. Right. Sorry to add that. Okay. Anything else? Um, I guess I just have two things, um, maybe three. So agree with other statements that have been made, and, and Michael, I'm just reiterating that, um, and, and I'll, I'll phrase it a little different. I will say that while we are approving the elementary, we're endorsing the other plans so that people can look at those and make decisions based on that. But as you said, then have the ability to call an audible if need be, relook at those plans and adjust them yeah. as necessary. But they would be more in the line of tweaks. Minor tweaks. As opposed to major changes. Right. No, right. better stated. Yeah. So, um, but it's important that everybody understand that. Um, I too uh, was around in 2009, 2010, and I will say that this process uh, was um, uh, much better than uh, what we did before, but that's what we're all about, right? We're all about improving. Sure. And um, and so I would expect nothing less than having a better process this, <laughs> this time than we did 15 years ago. Um, and that kind of segues to the next point. I know that, that you have already begun this, which is, and questions have already been coming up, about well, what's this like with a new high school, right? Do we still have the same classes? Is it the same curriculum? Will we have clubs? So all those questions are out there for individuals who are going to be going to West. Correct. And so I know you've already begun the process of trying to uh, and, um, have a robust FAQ. Yeah, and, and Dr. Pratt, he, this is something that he's spoke about before. So. Um, we just need to make sure that we have that available for people to kind of quell that anxiety sure. and let them understand, hey, it's, it's a new high school, but it's going to have all the facets of what anyone would expect in Tom ISD. Correct. Mm, sans maybe varsity sports for a couple years, but, but They anyways, will get there. That's right. So They I will think, have varsity sports, but it would be individual, not group. There you go. So there, there will be some differences but for the most part the objective is to have a school that looks like Tomball ISD's comprehensive high schools right so well, I think we sooner we get that out there the better all right any anything else all those in favor raise your hand motion carries unanimously great job nice yep. all right we'll move on to item I approve the purchase and installation of impact resistant film from entry shield Tips number 230202 at a cost of $1,837,906.30, funded by the School Safety Standards Formula Grant and Safety and Facility Enhancement Grant. <coughs> Do I have a motion? So moved. Did I hear a second? Second. 
Okay, so the motion was made by Mr. Unser, seconded by Mr. Lewandowski. Um, is there any discussion? I think the superintendent wanted to say something. I, I do. I want to say two things briefly. Um, first of all, I would like to recognize today is Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Aww. And we want to thank you, yeah. sir. We're very grateful for our partnership with Precinct 4, Mark Ehrman, and the entire team um, has truly made a difference. And uh, to have 29 officers district-wide brings me great pride. Um, safety is paramount and so important in our district, and so we are very grateful and thankful to you. Um, I said last night, I think it's important to reiterate that uh, I often talk about my concern about the lack of funding to public education, and I will continue to say that. Um, I do need to see additional dollars. We, I had a preliminary budget meeting today and I will continue to say we need to see additional funding. It is difficult to do all that we do when no additional money is put in. But I am thankful to the state for the safety and facilities enhancement grant which allows us to do this. Um, I want to thank the state for that. Um, although I wish we were able to see that more for the academic needs that we have, I am grateful for this um, money. So I, I just wanted to, to say that. Okay, good. And again, Thank you for all that you do. Yeah, I'll just, um, uh, I'll extend the, the thanks to Precinct 4, absolutely fantastic partners. Appreciate you, sir, and your colleagues very much uh, for tonight and everything you do every day on our campuses. And for this item, I am deeply, deeply thankful for the backup and the visitation with Dr. Gutierrez on this item. Um, just to have some understanding of, of <coughs> what we're actually getting here, and I, I feel very good about this and very thankful also for the uh, capability, the, the uh, skill that we're developing for grant writing, mm -hmm. it's very beneficial. In this time of, uh, you just said it, of, of limited resources limited and dollars. funding, uh, we need to do what we need to do in some way, and this is finding a way. So I, I really appreciate that. It's making things happen that we unfortunately need, um, but we, we have them here because of that. So I, I appreciate that, and the due diligence to make sure that we're, we're getting uh, absolutely what we need, and it's the quality we need, that we want for Tumball. So I'll add on to that. I, you know, it's in a way it's unfortunate that we have to think about for our safety of students and, and staff uh, putting this type of product on, on our schools. However, you know, we talked about grant writers and we have some great ones here because we, we, we are lucky a lot of times we're truly blessed and we were able to get this and you know it will be able to to put our concern about safety the community's concern about safety this is just another tool to help us mm -hmm. provide safety to our our students and and we're truly blessed so I just it's a good product and hopefully uh, it'll never have to be used for what it's there for Right. Any other comments? I just want to highlight um, for the public, in one meeting, we are authorizing monies for security on our campuses, greater security, and monies for more prevention. We talk a lot about that when we have closed session and we're talking security detail, we're often, you know, talking about you know, it's more than just hardening campuses. It's about making kids resilient. And so I just think it's a, a wonderful value add that this district is really working in both directions. And it is, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for the community um, to know that how hard, all the meeting time, I mean, all the hours spent in a conversation about this very issue on the security of our campuses, the issue in Iowa just this week, the shooting last week, you know, and. Kid, a lot of kids are in bad shape, but we have a lot of resources available for our kids. And uh, I just find it, I guess, it's bittersweet that we are voting on both of these things in one night, both protection and prevention. And uh, we work really hard at that. The district's worked really, really hard at that. So just a lot of gratitude to all those providing security to our campuses, um, as well as all of the emotional well-being that starts in the classroom, all the way up and uh, the families that make this community so uh, wonderful for our kiddos so just want to make that comment and that observation okay anything else 
All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries, excuse me, unanimously. We will now move on to item J. It is recommended that the Board of Education render a finding under Texas Administrative Code Section 249.14G that good cause did not exist as required by the Texas Education Code Sections 21.105C, 21.160C, or 21.210C for the following educator, Brooke Canning, to resign her employment contract. Do I have a motion? So, so, second. Motion is made by Mr. Unser, seconded by Dr. Pratt. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item K. It is recommended that the Board of Education render a finding under Texas Administrative Code Section 249.14G that good cause did not exist as required by the Texas Education Code Sections 21.105C, 21.160C, or 21.210C for the following educator, Alicia Garcia, to resign her employment contract. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Dr. Pratt, seconded by Mr. McLeod. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, that completes the considered agenda. Uh, we have already done our public comments with respect to non-agenda items, and we do not have a closed session this evening. So at this time, we will move into board comments. Are there any board comments? So I'll, I'll jump in real quick. So. Um, you know, Lee, you were talking about not only to protect but prevent, and Martha, you mentioned that this is Law, law Enforcement Appreciation, Appreciation Day. Day. So with respect to Precinct 4, that's what you guys do. Y'all are the full package. Um, you know, you, you're talking, Lee, we, we're doing the, the um, social-emotional type of, of um, uh, you know, yeah, but we're, we're, we're approving the, the uh, Clear Hope. Uh, and then we're also approving the, the film. And those are different vendors, different places. But those guys, they're the full package. They're, they're here to help prevent uh, working with the kids. And they do an amazing job. SROs are, uh, y'all are a special breed. And I really appreciate you. Um, and appreciate the, the support that, that we've gotten from Precinct 4. So again, as Justin said, thank you to you and your colleagues. You all are very much appreciated uh, in the district and, and I know by me personally. So again, full package, protect and prevent <laughs> and serve, mate. So, okay, anybody else? I, I have one final. I would be remiss if I didn't thank you and the team again for the special recognition last evening. Oh, yes. Uh, this takes time away from something. Um, so thank you to uh, the creative uh, forces that, that created that. Uh, I particularly uh, like the theme of the items that were shared. Um, and while um, the video didn't draw out a full tier, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was wonderful. So thank you uh, to the team that put that together. And thank you for those students that had the courage and the confidence to be able to share that. And so. Uh, uh, I asked you if that was going to be a tearjerker. It was pretty close. And so uh, maybe that's next year's benchmark is, is, uh, is, is <laughs> actually get, get a real tear. <laughs> but no, it was that meaningful. Uh, so thank you and the team again. All right. Very good. Well, yeah, we well I mean, many of us are wearing our ties. I, I see that. Top yes. all ISD uh, black ties. That's I love right. that. That's right. We, we do appreciate you um, much more than we probably ever tell you. Um, being elected officials during a time where not everybody is as supportive as perhaps they should be. Um, please know that we very much appreciate the work that you do. I don't think people always recognize the amount of time that you give for little, actually no pay at all. Um, I often remind administration we are paid for the job that we love to do and we're blessed to do, but you're volunteers and I know I personally am a very, very fortunate superintendent. I, I sometimes think I'm, I'm luckier than I should be when I talk to others and hear some of their stories of the non-supportive boards that they have to work with. And I, I am blessed to work with each of you. I mean that, uh, I truly am very thank lucky. Yeah, thank you all for the appreciation. It was very, and, and like you said, it was local, right? So yep. a, lot of, a lot of the uh, local stuff. Janice went around from vendor to uh, vendor and, and um, put those baskets together, so. My kids got into my pain train salsa last night, <laughs> ate it all, seriously. 
<laughs> Mine was empty, but it had the thing in it. <laughs> and I'm thankful for it. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Okay. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Mr. Lewandowski, seconded by Ms. Salem. Uh, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We are now adjourned. Great job, Joe. So loud with that. <laughs>